get started. The meeting is open. It is June 4th, 7 p.m. Um, let's go around and state who's present. Mark Sotir. Sandra Simon. Rick Mudd. Art Edgerton. Paul Clark. Rachel Keller. Thank you. Uh, the, the meeting is made available to uh, the public through a video and audio broadcast of the Comcast Government Access Channel for broadcast at a future date. Comcast, excuse me, comments made in open session will be recorded. All right. We uh, are going to get right to the agenda. There's uh, some mail, uh, excuse me, signings going around. We have a certificate of compliance for a 15 corporate drive, 358 School Street, uh, in order of conditions for Iowood Road, uh, lots 168 to 177, and Copperwood Road, lots 146 to 148, and lot 184. Yeah, I'll make a signature. Mm -hmm. So what you'll see All on that do. is there's no, uh, these are just back pages. Mm -hmm. So these are, you know, old business that um, needs to be cleaned up. So there's a lot of stuff to be signed there. But, uh, oh, I see all that. <laughs> yeah, but they're, just, they're okay. just back pages. Okay, so those have been around. Uh, Not that I don't, I don't trust Rachel or anything, but can we see that what that's going to be attached to? Attached to each. Uh, you guys actually saw it and approved it back in... Me. Right, but we're just giving you blank pages that are signed that could be put on anything. Well, the, there's a, um, there's a, there's a, there's a DT oh, number up okay. on the top, okay. right? So they reference right. registration. Right. Thank you. Yeah. It's just the, um, it's all of the orders of conditions for, well, so far that have been presented to us for um, Copperwood Circle. And originally, Merrill said that they would file them for us. They granted it, and then you guys signed. I think there were like six of them yep. for Silverwood Road. They took those and they actually did file those ones. They never filed these ones. Now this isn't going to change any of the status on the rec 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 reclamation process. Or anything. Just, the registry will only file with an original right. chief signed. So you guys already oh, approved yes. all of the conditions, right. I remember that. the special conditions. Um, that will be attached to these. We just, ne no one ever filed it. Right. It happens. Uh, <laughs> so well, I didn't know that. I called, so I called Merrill and I said, so what's the um, book and page number? Because no one wants um, a certificate of compliance right, exactly. on one of the lots. And they said, well, we think Owen filed them. So I called Owen and said, oh, I thought Merrill filed them. And I said, oh, boy. I'll file them. The merry-go-round. So yeah. as a point of discussion, should we not, should we talk about not allowing somebody else to file this these? Is, this is a normal... Thing. But in this particular case, because there was so many of them and they, everything was working together, that they said, well, we'll take the whole pile and do the whole pile. And they did six of them, the whole pile, and the whole pile got lost. But typically, we do not Misplaced. allow that. <laughs> it's somewhere. Obviously, Merrill's a stand-up company, so it just yeah. proves right. that no. even a stand-up right. company can right. not do what we need them to do. Right. So we, we shouldn't give people the option of it. Well, sometimes it's themselves. better for them to spend their time to do something than have to have Bob or somebody else do it. Well, they and pay we, us to, to well, do I know. Sometimes we let them write their OCC, and then we tweak it rather than having to do it. They know. Do they know what we want? Yeah, yeah, this is just for the filing at the registry. Oh, yeah. Oh, I understand that. Yeah. yeah. It, 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 we should be doing it all of that. Yeah. In this particular case, I think you're right. Was, we gave them that option. They volunteered to do the work. At a time when Rachel was still transitioning. On a, on a transitioning. New, on a new job. I think you're right, though. The workload was high, so we said, you know, okay, guys, we'll do it. Thanks. Pass right by. So, after you sign the pass. So, is it in our uh, purview to um, to vote on that? And, uh, well, yeah, we just won't. Do it. We won't. We won't do. We've already talked about this. From, yeah. so do we need to? Do we need to talk and vote on that, or do we just say, "Hey, that's what we do"? Okay. No, I mean for future, no, future for anybody future. else. That, we're, not that we're not giving people the option to file. No, actually, as a matter of fact, recently I've had requests from attorneys, and they want to go and file for whatever reason. That happens, well, no. No, we, okay. We don't allow All right. So we're already doing it. Yeah, we're already doing it. Going 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 going. Going. So now, yeah, going forward, right. we won't be allowing that. Excellent. Yet. Excellent. Okay. Great. Moving on, has everybody had a chance to review the, um, the meeting minutes from May twenty-first? Yes. yes. Okay. Any I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of the meeting for yes. May 21st. As written. As written. Okay, a motion has been made to approve the meeting uh, notes from uh, May 21st as written. I will second that. It's been seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? All right, unanimously passes. Okay, we have a few minutes. Um, Ed Thor's going to come in to talk about a few things. Um, our 710 meeting that uh, 
Uh, they're, late, they're not. They're not quite ready for us, so they're going to be coming in in a couple of weeks. So uh, all we have on the docket is uh, wood by now and uh, a few things uh, that Ed wants to talk about, like the water wheel, some North River business, and I think uh, one more item. We could take care of wood by without Ed needing to approve the same. Okay. Approve the uh, issue negative three allowed sand to be placed on Little Sandy Beach, but not in the water. All right, let me just get it on the record. All right, so... Uh, Any discussion? So this is a request for determination determination of applicability for zero wood by now. Um, Bob has just uh, made a recommendation. This is simply putting sand on, Could we have on discussion? the beach. We can certainly discuss it. All right, um, as you brought up in the past, it's an, er it's an erosion problem into a beach. It has oil slicks that develop all the time. I think it's okay to continue this, but I would love to see something long-term fix the problem because every year we're replenishing sand. And with that process of eroding, it's going right into one of the beautiful ponds in the town, Little Sandy. So it silts up and it allows oil from the roadway from three roads to come in and go into the pond. I'd like to see something long-term better than just replenishing sand. There's quite a rip that goes through there every year. Yeah, I haven't been down to the site. This so. is a town landing site, is that what you're talking it's about? The town, the town has spent money engine, trying to find a new user. The basic thing, other than taking over some of the houses in the area to create a some sort of a oh, pond, no. it's, it's an, been an impossible thing for anyone to engineer yeah, over the last 25 or 30 years. We've tried three or four different approaches. There was a cement sluice way that's been this, there's been that. I uh, saw a tar one. I didn't it's, see you know, it's when you have three hills or three roads yep. that are all are coming downhill and they all empty into one lot, which happens to be the beach. The water's coming down the hill and headed to the pond. And, you know, shy of asphalting the beach over, which would let the water go across the asphalt, is, the water table is about a foot at that level. At, at times, so there's no room to put in any drainage to speak of. Uh, so it's either get a, take one of the house lots, do away with the beach, uh, make the most, most of what we have. Well, Every so many years, we, they put the excavator down there and pull a whole lot of sand back out yeah. again and kind of start from, from scratch again. But so is that what is this a pull and replace of the sand? No, this is no. this year. It's just it it's, puts some okay. sand in where the washouts. Okay. No. Ah, this is not a pull out okay. year right now. Um, I would be in favor of a concrete sleuthway. Uh, all I saw was a tar sleuthway. I've never seen concrete. I'm not, no, not to be. I'm not first, saying but, it wasn't. But the problem with the concrete one is every winter <coughs> the concrete would buckle up, would buckle and and break, and they'd yep. patch it. And before long, it was pieces of concrete, so that's when Maybe. they decided asphalt would take the winter better and that didn't work either, I mean. So maybe they have newer concrete, better ways of putting it in, and or at least a, I would say, an oil boom just sitting there that soaks up no water, just oil. That would be an improvement, just a boom. Two stakes well, that, that soaks that up oil. The, the theory is great, but when that water from those three hills oh, yeah. starts coming down, there isn't enough boom around to soak up the oil as that it, with that water going across. It's going to... Well, it go. floats. I mean, it's a floating boom, so it would, yeah, it but would it's, level it, itself. When, when the water's coming that fast, it the boom is here and the, everything is going yeah. with it. I yeah. mean, it just... Uh, well, the oil doesn't get emulsified. It floats. So if you had a floating boom and anchored, it may... I'm just I'm not saying it would work. It would be nice to look into. It's a beautiful pond. So the, and the, the, it's given to the engineering company, nobody has come up with a, no. yeah. with a solution there yet. Uh, so it's, a D, it's a road problem. I was going to say, is that a DBW right. issue? It's, a, it's a road problem thing yeah. that ends up at the beach. You know, no. but, yeah, it is. It's a design problem that's been there forever. You know, it has been. Yeah. I mean, we've done more work. They, they've done a lot of things and nothing is... You know, and there is no real drainage pipes down there? Like s no. sewer systems, they just sumps here no. and there. There's a couple of sumps. That's all. And that's it's all. It's, so it really won't handle it. so high. There's nothing you can do with yeah, it. It won't handle it here. Yeah. I mean, there's the amount of area draining down to that one small is just tremendous. I mean, yeah. so you go there when it's raining hard, and you almost need a boat. Right. I mean, to, so what if there was a pumping station put in that would handle it and pump it up to the top of the hill into the basements? 
I'm just saying long-term yeah. future, that's well, something that at one point should be fixed. There's very few pumping stations that work well. I mean, you can go to the tunnels in Boston and, oh, yeah. and see them with their, and they still have problems. You've yeah. got men working 24-7 to keep them running. Where is the town of Pembroke going to, you know, yeah. The only time that you'd find somebody is when you call them out, and that would only be after the, after the pump the itself was already underwater and, uh, and not working. Something I, at like least that's sun. the way. You know, it's a, I usually can come up with some good ideas. Yeah, it's a, this it's, one it's a is one we've thought about and thought of every year, and it just, you know, yeah. I was hoping one time there was one house there that looked in pretty bad shape and all, and I was you know, trying hoping. to get the town to buy the lot, but they auctioned and. You know, they yeah. owned it and auctioned it. Right across the street from the, yeah, yeah that would have been a good site. The town already yeah. owned it? What? The town yeah. already owned it and they auctioned it off? Yeah. 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 Well, that's that's opportunity. Because, because, maybe the neighborhood should have maybe got together and bought on, it. Unless you're on conservation or living on that pond, you don't care what the water's hap happening in that part of, of, of town and when the house lot's worth X amount of money, Compared to, you know, digging a hole for some water to go in that you don't see, you don't stand a chance. It was, they wouldn't even consider doing that. They I think long term a pump would be probably the only solution there with a sump that it would, you know, take as much as it can and then pump out. I'm not saying today or this week. Yeah, or, but then if you were, we're going to pump it well, up into the system. Up over the hill yep. and then down the Couple drainage into the, into the bog area, which has you know, a could pond. be, but... As a what you pond. what you will find probably is obstacles when they're south thrown yeah. out. Well, first of all, the drainage on West Street wasn't made to pump all that extra water, and so now we're going to have to put all new drainage down West Street. And then when it gets down to the bog, well, that detention pond is only made for that water that was coming. Now we're going to have to do yep. that. And you know, that's a, it's, yeah, you open up the yeah, can you of open worms up the can of worms, and the next thing you know, one load of sand every. Every year, it goes into many hundreds of thousands of dollars of yeah. of work, and probably you still have to have some sand anyway. Do you think there could be some, some of it's not going to get pumped? Do you think there could be grants that could be achieved? Because it's not the water I'm worried about. It's simply just a basin to collect the oil off the water. Like they they put these pads in catch basins to catch the oil, and they yeah. work really rather well. The technology is there. Oh yeah, for for a catch. Basin. So they have to get a grant to do some sort of a basin to. It has to be one. Oh. Yeah. I mean, because it gets a, a catch, really yeah, a catch yeah. basin normally is for X square X feet. Amount, right. And here you've got X square feet, and X square feet, yeah. and X square feet all coming in. So if you have one here, you probably needed, you know, six or eight catch basins right at the bottom. Hmm. It's it's a bad situation. Right. If no, someone I'd, could come I'd up like with a good, I'd like to see it at least discussed so we can look at it and say maybe in the future we can have a solution because it is one of the most pristine ponds left in the town. Yeah. It's a beautiful pond. No, I, don't, I personally am all for solutions. I don't think we have any tonight. But no, nope, uh, yeah. we I wasn't meant to just. <laughs> it's good have to a talk solution. about it. Right. I don't know where it, where it goes from here and if it's yeah, is, well, is, okay, it, no, it's a, is it's it really a, it's a DPW been almost every. They have to come by at least every third year for putting sand on the beach because our waters are only a three-year basis. So every third year, anyway, we talk about it. And I know that we've DPW and the beach people, because the, be the uh, beach people, uh, I don't know what their official title are, but this, they the take care people. of the beaches in town. Mm -hmm. well, they're concerned about it. Yeah. There's a couple other problems. There's no... Uh, Facilities there, you have to right. have a outhouse on that beach yep. because there's out. no place to put a sewerage system in, even if you constructed a, be a, a beach house because the water table's too high. Other than a, a complete pump, you no know, pump yep. out, you might as well pump have out. the outhouse. So yeah. every <laughs> year we bring they bring in the outhouse to put on the beach now. Well, that, it doesn't give any change in here. It is there's, yeah. there's yeah. goods and bads about the beach, and then every so often someone will say. Well, let's just close the beach. Well, well you close you the beach that services a whole lot of houses in that area yeah. that are on the pond. And also then they'll sell the lot and put a house in there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so 
so yeah. yeah there's really it, it is a real predicament of the design I mean, it's, uh, absolutely it's in the bottom of a big bowl yeah. Yeah. and it's, there's there's not enough land to really put in a, an absorption there's, yeah, it's, 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 uh, it'd be as hard as doing the one on, on furnace lane and 14 the big dig. it'd be a major yeah. major yeah. deal I understand well, that. It, the, the biggest thing is the water tables there, so we don't right. know what you put in, it doesn't going to drain any oil. I was thinking more of a, a boom just to collect oil. Well, why don't we, uh, let's move on. What, can we have a... Well, we had a, you began to make a motion. A motion to close yes. the hearing. Oh, you were going yeah. to motion. Right. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. Right. Issue negative three. All right, I will second the motion for Woodbine Ave. Okay, so a motion has been uh, made and seconded to issue a negative three for uh, the RDA for zero Woodbine Ave. All those in Aye. favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Aye. Motion passes. Okay, gentlemen, welcome. All right, so. We'll take we took care of Woodbine, uh, so you know, we have to talk about that so we can move on to other business and uh, we can just open the floor up to uh, whatever way you want to take it. All right, well, let's talk about uh, the Herring Run Park. Uh, just, we'll just, just, just for the, the record, we're on tape, just introduce yourself. Oh, and Thorne Tenement, sir. Bill Bolter, uh, Selectman. Thank you. And the chairman on the Pembroke Water Wheel Committee. So I think one of the things we want to do is that the project that we're going to be proposing this summer will be uh, a joint project of the Marine Fisheries folks and uh, the Herring Fisheries Commission, uh, the Conservation Commission, and the Board of Selectmen in uh, spending a $100,000 earmark that we received from Senator DiMacito's office for an experience. The, the wording is for Herring Run Park improvements for handicap accessibility and a fish ladder, all right? And so what we're planning on doing is uh, the fish ladder proposal, which you have in front of you from Brad Chase from Marine Fisheries, um, and it's all in that one packet. Um, we, we're looking at a, a joint project at the bridge, and so um, this would necessitate either an amendment of the existing order of conditions that deals with the water wheel at a temporary location and amending it to allow the water wheel to be placed at a permanent position up by the bridge, by the stone bridge. So um, I think one of the things we'd like to have the Conservation Commission uh, determine is to whether or not it would be a, uh, an amended order of the an amended order of the, the existing conditions, which we all know went round and round and round with DEP and all that kind of good stuff, or to have um, the petitioners come back with a new notice of intent and a new order of conditions. So that's something that we like the Conservation Commission to chew on before their next meeting and, and make that determination at their next meeting so we can go forward. Because they're in a situation that we have with the, uh, the earmark funds, um, I need to at least start expending some funds before June 30th because there was going to be a drop dead date of June 30th it to spend all of the money. But obviously um, the Department of Public Safety, which is administering the program, you know, what, there was a bean counter in Boston that said you got to spend it by June 30th. Well, we just got the money a month ago, you know, because it, it took all winter for us to get the money released because there was a battle between the governor and the legislature over vetoing all these different kind of earmarks. So anyway, so we, the Senator DiMacito prevailed, but the money wasn't even brought, you know, wired into the town until April. So anyway, that being said, um, we can start the ball rolling on a couple of projects dealing with handicap accessibility. I've already signed a contract with Weston and Sampson. Uh, we received a $10,000 grant from the Community Compact Program for an ADA transition plan townwide. I asked Weston and Sampson if they would start with 
the Herring Run Park and Tubbs Meadow, because those are two projects that uh, A, have been funded by the state earmark, and B, by community preservation. Uh, that was an article that was passed in, um, at uh, the annual town meeting. And that, those ones will be available uh, on July 1st. Correct, Rachel? That's correct. You know. So, um, you know, and, and so that's to make the, uh, the parking lot and the, the pathways and everything handicap accessible. Mm -hmm. So, anyway. And um, will, that, will that qualify for your June 30th deadline to get some money on, on the dock? Yeah, for the Herring, well, this is, um, you know, the Herring Run Park, um, if there are some things that we can do from a handicap accessibility standpoint, and I could draw down some money. I mean, the money's already here, believe it or not. It was wired to the treasurer's office, so we literally have the hundred thousand, you know. But you know, I think in good faith we would try to expend some of that money, you know, maybe a, a fraction of it. But I think, uh, from a long-range standpoint, um, what we want the uh, conservation commission to do is to to make the determination as to what direction. Um, you know, Bill and, and myself need to go and with Brad Chase uh, and this joint project um, at the uh, at the location of the, the water wheel and the permanent location in conjunction with the creation of a new fish ladder up at the uh, at the bridge. Isn't this something we've already decided? It's, I don't yeah. think so. Not from I mean, we we've always dealt with amending the order of conditions in the in the temporary location. Which is down by the, the little hut. Yeah. Okay. We've never talked about, at least not in the last s several years, about the permanent location. You know, we fought the battle with the petitioners, um, with the EP over the the order of conditions regarding the temporary location. You know, that's not a consideration anymore. My recommendation only is because we've got so much garbage in the order of conditions that we have right now that if we amend it, we're adding paper or bond paper so that instead of having somebody wants to know about the file, all of a sudden you're bringing stacks of paper like that. I'd like to see from start scratch on the permanent location. We've got this one. The temporary room is still so existing. We don't have to get rid of it. You know, it's there for the temporary, but we're going to be working a fish ladder and wheel and handicap thing and tie it together in one that handles everything from there on. That way we aren't touching any of the old stuff, we aren't getting into any of the old... It does problem. seem cleaner. To we're looking at a, at a new project, basically a new project to go ahead. I just think it's a lot and there easier any, and cleaner. There isn't any time savings because we're still going to have to post. It's still going to have to be posted. We're going to have a public hearing. Right. It doesn't right? matter which way so we go. We still have the same the, work, right? the old one. Yeah. To amend, we have to have an have notify about us and have another set of hearings and go through basically the same thing as as a brand new one. So it seems like it would be a wash on time. Right. Right. And cleaner, starting with, you know. The correct information as opposed to the then, historical yeah. file that seems like it's a mess, which I haven't seen, but I take your word for it. Yeah. Does that, you know, well, what do you guys think? What do you guys think? Um, I think it's time critical, and if we postpone and we lose the money, who's going to pay for it? The town? It's going to come out of our pocket. Well, Rick, I'll make sure that we don't lose the money. You know, I mean, I'll. Yeah. You, ex I you're mean, gonna, you explained you can expend a portion of the money yeah, we'll, before and that the locks it in. We'll, yeah. right, you know, we'll start the ball rolling yeah. on the yeah. handicap accessibility part, yeah. whether it's just mats going in uh, or, or uh, doing something on the bridge itself. Mm -hmm. But the main component is going to be the structure that will house the fish ladder and, and the water wheel. And I mean, that'll be the main yeah. thrust. Of See, that was which had nothing to do with the old order of conditions, right? No. Right. That, that's well. Well, it did. Yeah, it did. Okay. See, I thought it was in the temporary no. site. Yeah, it it wasn't a temporary site. See, originally when I came before the the board here, um, I came before the board to to um, make a wheel and put it in the permanent location of where the water wheel was, the old water wheel was, and that's you can probably see. I 
I didn't look through this thing yet, but there's probably a picture of the old wheel in here yeah, somewhere. Yeah. Um, that was in the original notice of intent to go in to put the water wheel in the, in the permanent location. So when we talked to the engineers about that, they said, well, it's, it's probably going to cost you $100,000 to put the wheel in the permanent location. And I said, you're kidding me. It, I mean, that much money to put a six-foot wheel in, you know, in the structure there? And he said, yeah, by the time you get through, it's probably going to be $100,000. So I said, well, okay. So um, we talked to conservation and said, um, it looks like we're going to have to raise money to do this. So we already <coughs> have the wheel. The wheel was, was donated by the 300th Anniversary Committee to the town. And... Um, which was worth about ten thousand dollars, and um, so we had the wheel, and now it was. Now we're wondering um, on how we're going to get it in there with this en engineering fees and and uh, that other stuff. So we said, well, is there any way we can put it in a temporary location until we get the money to put it in the permanent location? And um, and they agreed. Conservation picked the spot to put it, and that's where we put it. And there was some discussion about it having to be in the water, out of the water during migration and all that kind of stuff. And that's where all the appeals come in was, was um, it originally got appealed because um, if we pull the wheel out of the water during migration periods, that would be six months out of the year. And in July and August, when we could put the wheel back in the water where there wasn't any migration, there is no water. So then we asked to build up the um, the brook in the different places that raise the water level up to where it originally is during the spring and in the fall months. And um, they said, no, we couldn't do that. So that would mean that um, eight months out of the year that the wheel wouldn't work. That's why it was originally appealed. The state said we couldn't do that? No, no, no. The, the, the town's... Conservation Commission. Okay, at the time. Sorry. Water or condition said you can't do it, do it during migration, mm -hmm. but you can put it in in July and August. Right. And you can put it in in the winter time. Right. Who said we couldn't uh, modify the, the the Brook Passage to uh, to change the water levels? Was that the state? Conservation. Oh, that was conservation as well. Yeah. Okay. Said that we couldn't do that without going to um, the Army Corps of Engineers because we were changing the water level and all that stuff. So since then, we got a letter back from, from the Army Corps of Engineers that says they're not really interested in um, <laughs> this, this whole project mm -hmm. that's, that's okay. there because it's, uh, it really is navigable waters and they don't, they, they don't have an interest in it. So we have a letter here somewhere. Um, but anyway, so that was the confusion was um, I took it personal that it was against me because now it means that there was nine months, uh, uh, eight months out of the year that the wheel would not turn. And, and what we made it for and had it engineered by an engineer for was to put it in the water and let it work. So we tried modifying the orders of condition to cut with the Division of Marine Fisheries, came up with putting fencing screening around both sides of the wheel so that no, no fish would go near the wheel at all. And um, so that went through some hearing process and all that. And eventually we got conservation's approval to do everything. We went to DEP and we got DEP's approval to do everything. And we're all set to, to do, to, to start the project to put the, the wheel back in the water into the permanent location. And um, that was what our original intent was, not to put it in the temporary okay. location. Our intent was never to leave it there in the temporary location. Our intent was to leave it there during the three-year period that we had um, while we raised money to put it in a permanent location. So now all this time went by, and the last decision that was made by DEP sent it back to the town and said, we got so much stuff in here um, because it was appealed by one of the old conservation people after everything was approved. It went back under appeal again to DEP, and then they looked at everything and found some discrepancies in there that the DEP 
had made, instead of approving or denying the new orders of condition, they actually even made them better for us, which they cannot do. They don't have the right to do that. They either have to approve or deny. And they actually made it better for us, which was good as far as we were concerned, but, but it, um, it wasn't good as far as the hearing officer was concerned, which meant that she would have to dismiss the case and it would be DEP's fault. So um, we said, well, we both agreed on both sides to just dismiss this whole thing and send it back to what the original um, orders of conditions were, which meant that we have a right to put the wheel in there now. So we could have put the wheel back in there. But during, during the hearing process, one of the concessions was, if you put me back on conservation, then I'll drop this whole appeal. And we said, no, we're not going to do that. And the other one was, if, um, if you don't put the wheel in the temporary location and go for the permanent, we won't appeal it. So I said, well, it's maybe you wouldn't appeal it, but how do we know somebody else wouldn't appeal it? So we didn't go along with that. But then as we thought about it, we said, you know what? If we don't put it in the temporary location and just leave that alone and don't put it in there, even though we have the right to do that up until June of 2019, um, maybe we'll save a little face and say we're doing it in good faith that we're not going to tick off these people and we'll leave it out of the water until we get it in the permanent location. So for five years we got $100,000 from the state and every year they took the money back. Right? So they'd earmark $100,000 and then they would take it back and they'd say no. So this year they were doing the same thing up until the last few months, and then all of a sudden they said, oh, here it is, here's, here's $100,000. So the reason I didn't come in three months or six months ago and try to get this is, is because we didn't have any money. Okay, so, so there's no sense of, of us coming in and saying, here's our plans, this is what we want to do, but we don't have any money to do it. <laughs> So okay. it didn't make much sense so to just do a that. Good question, and I'll probably be sorry I asked it, but oh. last fiscal year, when the money was there, and yeah. it seemed like there was approval to all this, why why didn't it get done? What what was the thing well? That actually, it I talked to to uh, Karen Polito, okay. and I told her what the story was, and she said, I don't understand why you didn't have the money in January because I signed that to be approved for Pembroke in January. So you should have had the money in January. Even if we had it in January, we'd be in better condition than we are now. So the only thing that I'm um, kind of upset about is a, a little bit is that we don't have a lot of time. So no matter which way we go, we don't have a lot of time. But the whole purpose of this thing was to put the wheel in the permanent location. So as I talked to um, the Division of Marine Fisheries, um, they want to put their, their ladder around the wheel. So if the structure is not there for the wheel at, at this time, they're not going to be able to do their ladder around the wheel because they have nothing to go by. Right. So they can't do that. So that's going to stop that process to do that. May I interrupt you? What is the timeline of the new ladder? When the there isn't any, there isn't because any. they haven't been here to get approval yet. Okay. So so Brad Chase has to come before you, mm -hmm. which he sent a letter here with what he wants to do and all that, okay. but there's no plans with it at all. He was supposed to talk to Bob a month or so ago, but this time of year is very busy for them because of the fisheries, so they're, they're extremely busy. But um, at some time he's going to talk to Bob he was going to talk to uh, Ed Thorne and myself and probably try to meet either this week or next week and come up with a better plan to show you people on what he wants to do and how he's going to do it down there because there's several different locations at the, at the um, 
site itself of the Heron Run that's not hazardous, but but it's um, not good for the fish. Okay. It may be fish kill or harder for the fish, fish to get up in certain areas. So the biologists are working out a plan to put in um, different structures down there to help the fish get almost like small ladders to, to come up so the fish will be able to get up um, a lot easier. And as far as like where the, um, the bridge is, if they um, put the ladder up through the bridge, it's going to make that area much, much better than what it is. But they really need to know where the structure is for the water wheel before they do that because what they said is, well, you know, this was way back. Give us a call when you get the wheel in and we'll come down and we'll do this work. So we saved all of the stone from the center, right. which is probably two and a half, ten wheel loads of, of uh, granite mm -hmm. that would have cost the town a lot of money to, to use this, to do this project. But we have all that for nothing. That didn't cost us a dime. So <clears throat> Brad Chase's um, idea is it might cost him $1,000 for some cement and some diamond stone blades and stuff like that to do his work, um, what he needs to do down there. And there's also two other locations that he wants to talk to conservation about to help the heron go, you know, get upstream. There's one off of Hobmark Street and one off of uh, Cranberry Lane that he wants to use the uh, county, the new county um, machine. But that's going to take some permitting and and uh, <coughs> for, for the all that, all that kind of, of stuff. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's probably going to talk to you about all of that stuff. But but the original stuff that has to do with with uh, the location at the Heron Run. So now. Stepping forward a little bit, I talked to PA Landers and and um, just to get a price on what they thought that it was going to cost, and <clears throat> so the engineer was working on that. What the what the engineers for the plans that we have cost us eleven thousand dollars, and we got that out of the three hundredth anniversary money, so it didn't really cost the town any money. That was all donated to the three hundredth anniversary. So seeing that that was a birthday present and all that that we gave to the town, that we used that money out of there when we were in executive session to, to um, uh, settle uh, some problems in, in, while we were in executive session. So that's how we ended up getting that money. So, um, so that's already paid for the engineering, is, is, um, is pretty much paid for as far as I know. And then the, um, the other money, which we talked to Landers about, was um, he said that if you could start to do some of the work down there now, there's, there's um, a lot of evasive species and stuff that's all along the, um, the street side of where the brook is, mm -hmm. where the permanent wheel is going to go. So it's not that I want to clean that all out of there, but if Landers wants it cleaned out of there and somebody else gets that contract to go in there and do it, they're going to ask the same thing. So, so there's a bunch of... There's a bunch of uh, evasive species and small trees and brush and stuff that's, if you, if you went up to where that crossover is where the bridge is, mm -hmm. and you backed up a little bit, there's a big huge tree there. I think it's might be an oak tree or something that's there. Ash. <coughs> so he knows them. I don't know anything about trees. So um, an ash tree, but on both sides of that, that will clean that whole area up there. That. We're willing to do that work. We're willing to take that stuff out of there that's evasive. And and he can digna somebody can signify exactly what is evasive and what can go and what can. So if we can get that out of there then then we can have some other people look at it too because they're gonna need that location to go in there with equipment to, to do any work in there. So it's the only thing I'm worried about is is um, is the timeline, and I apologize for the timeline, but it really wasn't our fault. It was, it was something that had to do with the um, with the state, just not, you know, signing off the check and sending it to us right away. So, so we're kind of up against it. We're going to try to do as much as we can, mm -hmm. um, 
and I want to do everything conservation wants us to do. Mm -hmm. I mean, if we have to have a public hearing, then we have to have a public hearing. If, um, but to try to expedite it, mm -hmm. because it's been over five years now that we've been doing this, and it would be nice to get it done, and while we have the money, um, and if there's anything extra that we need after we get this thing started, then maybe we could get some money from uh, CPC because they've already given money for Ludham's Ford, a couple hundred thousand dollars. So, so if we could get something to finish off the project, then that would be good. Okay. Yeah, to finish it well, off, so. I have a comment, um, being 100% new to the water wheel project, and, and with apologies to all members that worked on this from the beginning, I'm slightly overwhelmed by all the points we're making right now and what needs to be done. I think that's I, why I'm here. Okay, because I started out listening that some monies have to be spent by a deadline or we'll lose them, and there's a plan to spend a portion of it so it's not lost, and that money's earmarked for a water wheel project. And then another thing I heard was there's an order of conditions. Should we amend the existing order of conditions for the water wheel, or should we start with a fresh request for the order, and that the timeline would be the same, whether we See, the, amend or start yeah. brand new? See, this is where it really gets confusing, because originally when, when we started this project, it was the only thing that we wanted to do was build a water wheel and put it in the water. Right. That was it, right? And that didn't go off too, too happily, you know. Uh, at first it did. It, everything was really great. Matter of fact, conservation at one of their meetings agreed to give us a thousand dollars towards engineering fees, which we never got. But mm -hmm. but it is. I in have the minutes. no knowledge of what and went on in the so, past, right. and neither so. do I. So, so, so right. which is good. So we have, yeah. you know, I can tell you that I think co so, collectively as a body, we we want to get this done and we want right. to work with you. I think there's a, there's a 60-page document that got put in front of us today that right. we haven't had a chance oh, to look at. Oh, no, no, I right? understand so that. We I'm need to do some homework, and I know there's some historical knowledge that's sitting here. Yep. We don't have it, so we yep. need to we yeah. need to spend some time I, I catching up. I, I understand that, yeah. but it's the only reason that I came tonight. Was, I mean, Ed could have, could have sat here and told you exactly what had to be done, and you have to make the decision. But the other thing that I just wanted to come and give you a little background information on on the whole, on the whole project, because originally it was just a water wheel. That's all we yeah. wanted to do, right? And that was quite a project to get going and get started. So then it, it came upon like, well, why don't we do an? It says, why don't we do an improvement thing for the whole park? Mm -hmm. And I said, well, that sounds like a good idea. So, so we did uh, have somebody from the engineering make up a plan to put handicap accessibility ramps. Okay. Uh, walkways and stuff like that all through the park and we brought that before conservation as a plan to do a whole bunch of things mm -hmm. in the park and that didn't go over too good mm -hmm. when we had the public hearing now we've had five public hearings on this water wheel right <coughs> so <coughs> excuse me so that didn't go over too big they said the less is better the less you do down there the better don't do anything down. We don't want anything down there. But the people that are in the that are in the handicap um, uh, wheelchairs and all that couldn't get around down there. They they couldn't get themselves over to where everybody cooks their hamburgers and hot dogs, and they couldn't see in different places and stuff because they couldn't get their chairs in there. So um, there was a lot of discussion about that. And the guy that was in charge of the handicap accessibility stuff said. Well, I mean, you can really sue the town and have the state come in and overrule the town and say you will do this, you know, you will make it handicap accessible. So we try to do that without yeah. getting the state involved and that kind of stuff. So Ed says, why don't we just make this a whole big project? Mm -hmm. so, so now it's got, it's got bigger, so now sure. it's got the handicap accessibility. And I think got, anybody looking at it clean can see right. the rationale of We're making it a whole big project, right? That makes, it sounds like it makes sense. Right. You have something to say. So. Uh, sorry, but I see everything entirely different than what Mr. Bolter has presented. Okay. And I could, could in many, many cases, object to what he's saying. I've been through it way too long. It isn't worth it. It 
it's a fight that we fight and we could fight again. This is why I think we need to start clean because the same old stuff is going to keep coming up. A lot of it is correct. He sees one thing, I see something else, you probably see something else. He's done a great job selling his project. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to try to shoot the holes in it because we aren't going to gain anything except losing time by shooting holes. I want to see the project done. I want to see it done right. I don't see a good plan. And my objection from day one is we need a plan. Uh, right now we're talking, we're going to put the stanchions in here and get that done. Then we're going to do something else around it. No, no, you put it on a plan. This is what it is. Brad Chase can work on a plan just as well as Landers can work on a plan. Well, I'll put it on the plan so we know what we're looking at, not piecemeal as each person brings his machine in and digs. And that's what I've looked all along. Give me a plan of what we're going to do, what we're striving for, and let's go and get it done. And it's been way too long. I don't want to fight all these old battles. They're all no. done. Right. I want to see something new and done, but done constructively. I, I want to see the park look as a park should. I don't want it to be new. I don't want a big gazebo up in the back corner. I want as little change to keep it authentic as we can keep it authentic and yet deal with what we have to deal with, handicap and, and everything else in there. But, so that's why I think we just need to start from scratch. It, we need a plan. Nothing is done these days without a plan. Every pe person that comes in here has a plan. We haven't seen a plan So, so let's, let's, let's get to that. So, do you gentlemen, is, has anybody, the engineering company that you're working with, do we have a plan? Yes, there's a plan in here that we paid $11,000. Is it a, it, is it a, co is it a collective off. plan that incorporates all it's, of the things we want to no, do? No, no. And that's it, why can I it be? jump absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right? Oh. And that's why all I wanted to do tonight on this particular subject was ask you folks, what do you want to do about the order of conditions? That's all. Yeah. You're going to have it, is it going to be an amended or is it going to be a new one? That's all I wanted. I don't even know what the first <coughs> one was at this point. Um, it just deals. It deals with the temporary location, which which and is we're not, not doing that anymore. We're done with you know, that. I, yeah. I mean, you know, I think we should. All right, let's go for permanent. Why wouldn't we start clean with and let all that old garbage? Just go back to where it belongs. That's you start. always call. I yeah. mean, that's yeah. why. Are we going to end up with the same amount of garbage piled on top of right. it anyway? Yeah. Well, I don't think so because the temporary site is no longer in play. Well, and a lot started. of it seemed to have to do with the temporary site. Well, we started with the permanent location. That was the original design and the permits. Right. No? No. Nobody started with the permanent location. We could never do We could never do the permanent location for two reasons. One, Bill brought up with money. Second was time. In other words, we were again forced to time. It was springtime, 300th anniversary was coming up in July. We could not go through all of the paperwork necessary to put in stanchions and everything and get them done in time to put the wheel on there for July. And that's why we started looking for a temporary place for the wheel so it could be visible at the 300th at the anniversary. Birthday. Okay. Well, Bill's got and to that's where to everything went wrong. Three, so, okay. Yeah. Maybe you can let him go, and then I'll follow up with you. Right. Is that true, Bill? It wasn't. It was never considered in the permanent location. Well, that, that's what we originally went went to conservation for. Was for the permanent location. We never went for. We didn't go there and apply to put in a temporary location. We went there to put in the wheel in the permanent location where it originally was. So the only thing that the town's attorney said was that um, it would be much easier to modify the orders of uh, orders of condition that are already in place and and move it from one location to another. In other words, change it from the order of condition says temporary. Is that what it says at it present? It says temporary location. And right? you want to amend it to say Just permanent. To say permanent location. I'm curious right. why he thought it would be. Uh, quicker or more expeditious to amend those because you still have to have the public hearing, you still have to well, post you, the notice. You know, from see, a time yeah. perspective, mm -hmm. it doesn't save you anything. Well, the only other thing is that everything everything uh, has also been filed with um, Registry of Deeds. Yeah. It's um, all of the town boards that I went through, every oh. one of those. So if you start off fresh and clean, brand new, 
Is that what I have to do? Do I have to go get a new building permit? Do I have to? If you amend it, you have to do it all again because those things weren't for the permanent location. Oh. The, everything that's in that packet is for a temporary location. So if it's amended, then it's still so the it's same that's time frame. You get for the permanent location. Yeah. Well, I, I the only dis disadvantage I see to amending it is it brings back in that history, which sounds like it's a mess. It's gonna Why would we anyway. start clean? It's, it's going to come back anyway. It is? No. Yeah. It is. I agree with Art on that one 100%. It, from, from why? From my experience with the town. But I don't even know what the history was. With with what? with board members, <laughs> with abutters, with <laughs> who? The abutters weren't a problem. There were some people that were on former commissions that were disgruntled, and it pretty much says if you just drop the case, then put me on conservation. That says he had a permanent agenda to just put a cog in the wheel, so to speak. So those type of disgruntled things, mm -hmm. whatever you're going to do, I'm going to come back, in my opinion. I've been yeah, on this the whole process. Art agrees with me. And they can do it for their amendment. If you amend it, they I have said, all I their rights again. It's, 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 it's the back same back. rights either way. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, well, it's, that, that, that is, is irrelevant yeah. so that So what's way. the process going to hurt to just amend it so we can go forward? It's, it it's all like, going to come back. It sounds like it's going to be the same time-wise, and it's going to be the same. We all just agree. Bob, me, Art, Bill, that these people are probably going to come back. Oh. So nothing's going to change. When you talk about all the different boards, the, the, the original... Um, the original boards that we went through, which which I think we left them out, but um, on the original ones that we went to, uh, first place we came was the conservation. We had to go to the planning board and get that approved. We had to have uh, zoning, um, to go through zoning and all that, and have that approved. And then the uh, Department of Public Works, we went to the Historic Commission, we went to the Watershed Association, we went to the Building Department, got a building permit, Division of Marine Fisheries, Zoning Department, and that had to get rezoned and all that so we could do it. Um, and then the engineers, and there was uh, surveyors, and they had to resurvey it and all of that. So that's going to cost more money to have it resurveyed and have it, and have it put into the permanent location. Um, oh, that's for the temporary. None of it's yeah. for the permit. There isn't a thing in there for the permit. And it would have to all be done for the permit. Well, it, this is where we disagree because I didn't come in to conservation to put it in a temporary location. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. I came in to put it in a permanent location. Matter of fact, Bob and the other secretary helped me fill out the notice of intent to put it in the permanent location. That was my whole goal was not to put it in a temporary location, was to put it in the permanent one. What does the right? notice of intent say? The, the original notice of intent. No, oh, only one notice of intent has ever been filed. Yeah. There's this talk about all these other paperwork. They were yeah. never filed, never right. acted on. The only notice of intent that's been acted on is when you asked for the one after the wheel was put in on a temporary. That is it. Yeah. There is nothing else in any file filed anywhere for a permanent location. Okay, well, then I'll have to go through my old paperwork and I've got enough of that, that's so for sure. But my, my point um, on whether we uh, file new or amend the existing one is really based on time and the advantage of time. So I, it doesn't matter to me which one we do. I'm just saying it seems to me to be cleaner to file a new one. But it doesn't really matter. If we're going to get to the same place, you know. It's not going to be cleaner. If, if the time is awash and, well, the, and the same things it, are going to come up, you know, it, it doesn't really well, matter. Well, the only thing that, the only thing I can say is that, um, in my opinion, I think it's going to be, it would be easier to, to modify um, what we already have, to modify it to go from here to this location over there and have the public hearing for the modification to go from here to there, rather than to start all over again brand new. Because when you start all over brand new, you got to start all over brand new, right from day one. Mm -hmm. you, gotta, you have to go back to the building department to get a new building permit, and you have to go to zoning, and you have to get that approved. All these things take time. A lot of these boards don't meet every week or every two weeks. Are, are, is, like the building permit, is that still uh, valid? Or is what does the yeah. building permit say? Uh, uh, no, the they, building permit is still, still valid. valid? Okay. Yep. Says what? For temporary or permanent? 
What does it say for? It says temper. It's all in the temporary thing. And it, I'm going to tell you, if you amend the thing, yeah. you're going to open up for all the appeals in the world because there's too much in there that can be appealed. It's not with you. It's, they, they, you've got tons of appeal if well, you try, amend it and put I'm, what you've well, got here well, over there. I'm going to try to understand what you're saying. You're saying if it's amended and we do it as mm. simply as changing it from mm. temporary to permanent, your interpretation is that the supporting paperwork all has to be redone because the supporting paperwork is temporary. So It's for the temporary location. It's not for the permanent location. Either way, we're going to need that the same that, thing. That, yeah. plan, it's the same, yeah. that inclusive plan that incorporates right. all of the changes, right? No right. matter what. So, right? so we're, we're going to end up losing it. That's what we're going to end up losing. You'll think you'll lose the money? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Well, why can't why can't you start? Because, this, because you, you this. start by cleaning out those invasive species. That's that that can be done. That's prep work, right? That's going to spend some of that money and lock it in. I mean, that's that does sounds that like actually you know, lock it in. Do we have that in writing, or is this just thoughts? It's already wired. We have it in writing. It's so the, the, we have it in writing. In, the money is in the building. It's in the well, building now. Yeah. It doesn't mean well, it can't be taken let me back. Just, let me just ask you a question, Bob. How long do you think? That it's going to take me to start from day one and get all of these permits that that I originally got for the temporary location. Well, you're going to need them all for the permit because your permits are for the temporary location. It's like oh, saying, just I'm, you, I've got I'm them just, here, I'm just going to put them here. You can't you're saying it's the same amount of work no matter what. No, I'm I just asking you, how long do you think it would take me to do that? That's all I'm asking. I don't know. I have. The, I'm, I don't, didn't chase the permits. I don't know. No, but you but mean, I, I, I'm looking at it from a conservation standpoint. Right. And if you're trying to take a permit that was issued for here and use it over here, You've opened yourself up for all sorts of appeals well, because this it's, this permit wasn't issued for this wheel over here. It was issued to fit in this box right here, not put on stanchions. There was no permit issued to build the stanchions. There was not, none of that was issued. So, I mean, I'm looking at it to from our standpoint as well as yours because I don't want to go through all of the no, stuff. We may have to go through it again, no. <laughs> but I don't want to give them a whole lot more to fight with than we can. I want to cover our tail ends yeah. as much as we can to get well, to where we they, want to go. They can't appeal, nobody can appeal anything that's happened in the past. Because even if, if, if we change this from the temporary location to the permanent location, whatever's happened before and all of the things that we've done in the past, nobody can appeal that because it's well, gone Nobody that. that appealed the first time around. It doesn't say that nobody in the world, because you well, can't grant appeals, take away appeals process from someone who hasn't signed the appeal, uh, the papers. Right, but I think so. That, that could uh, be anybody else could do it. Not worried about anybody else. They, well, they, well, not worried what they, about anybody else. What they told us. Well, and, you see, now you're getting personality. I'm trying no, to work no, out of I'm no, personality. They no, what, I'm, what I'm just trying to say is, town council told us that this is the end of it. There is no more appeals. On the temporary location. On the temporary, right? There is no more appeal. On, on the temporary, temporary. Yeah, on the temporary, right. 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 That doesn't mean that if we change it from temporary to permanent, that somebody won't appeal the permanent location. Mm -hmm. right. So, in other words, you well, guys, that's, that's what I'm saying. You guys could agree to change this over to the permanent location because. It's the same lot. It's the same place. It's a couple hundred feet away from where. It's the, not the same thing at you know, all. Though. It's you're, and, you're digging. You're putting stanchions. You're putting right. all these other. You're putting a, uh, a bypass around it. You're refixing. It's not the same thing. And I, right. uh, I don't believe any court would ever say it is the same that you're switching over. It's an entirely yeah. different process. Well, it's. It's um, yeah. I don't know. It's just a it's a dilemma because um, I don't have another year or a year and a half or two years to be putting in on this project. Well, um, it, it sounds like we all agree on a few things. It, I think we all uh, agree that we want the you know the the betterment of the park to to get done. We want to find a way to do it expeditiously, and we want to make sure that everybody's concerns are served. Right. So see, I, you know, see the. The biggest thing with conservation is they wanted a plan for the water wheel. 
that's that's what and, this and, whole thing was all about. Well, and I think and we have the plan here. Okay, and I, it's but like I think forty it's, pages long. But it's also so, fair, I no. think, you know, to have a plan for the complete work, right? And you you said you could get that correct. Yeah. That's why it would be a prudent use of that hundred thousand, because, like I said in the beginning, that hundred thousand earmark under contract that was signed by the town, me, says handicap accessibility at the Herring Run Park and a fish ladder. Right. I think if, if we didn't, you know, as a board, if we didn't have a plan like we would have for anything else that came in front of us, we would be open to scrutiny for not approving something without seeing a plan, right? We certainly well, don't want to we be We actually in that have mode. that paperwork you just mentioned that it specifically says you oh, yeah. have it. Yeah. We do. Yeah. My feeling is that, you know, being on both boards, fisheries and conservation, as other people have been in the past, um, that the fish count counts, and that's a trap. As soon as we get it fixed, even if it's a week early, we, we, could, we could actually hit a run. It could save a whole run, a whole year of fish, just by a week. Okay, so as far as fisheries, it's, I would say that expeditiously as possible, speaking for the fish, which is what I speak for now myself. That's a trap. It always has been a trap. It will remain a trap in a kill zone. That's what it was the designed fish. for. That's what it was designed for. As soon as we fix that, everything is better. As soon as we do the conservation part of it, then the state, the fisheries, all other entities that are involved in this, as we've gone through with them, can Move I think everyone agrees to fix it, but I guess you have to have your eyes dotted and your T's crossed. And like I said, I'm speaking yeah. for the fish at this yeah. moment, not anything else, not conservation. Strictly as a fisheries or for the fish, the voice of the fish. If they run into this as the first impediment, 20 miles up the river, the first and only impediment that kills fish. And it's by human design that it kills fish. And that needs to be corrected as soon as possible, not even a week late, because fish come when they come. And if you miss another year, you miss thousands of fish they get killed. Or we have to go in there and put ugly sandbags. The walls are falling in. You know, you want ugly sandbags every year? Do you want to go in and move boulders around in tunnels and hurt no, people? No, the, this is what the, happens in the, this But site. the upstream... This you is know what happens occur already speaking for this year, right? So no, we're, we're basically talking about next year at this point, right? There could still be fish coming up. We don't know. Are they coming but back the down? The point is, do both? next year what time? Because it's all time critical with the yeah, fish. I mean, and we don't, nobody you know, chooses it's only June when the fish come. I, you know, I, no. I certainly don't have next year in my, in my in time zone. <laughs> You can have my resignation. Yeah, I mean, you know, this is something we should be talking about in sure? months, not not in years. No. We, we've had other people say that and come right back on the board. Yeah. You know, again, I I think you know, again, uh, not speaking obviously speaking for the membership here, but I think we all want to see it done right. We want to see it. We want to give you the opportunity to get it done as quickly as we can. Sure. So and and open it up for less scrutiny from whoever might have a problem with it. So. Whether that's amending the formal order or creating a new one, you're going to you know, have people I guess that don't for, like this. For you to decide, you're going to have gonna, people that don't like it. But you yeah. don't need to give them more ammunition than what they have. Right. Well, if you if you change the order of conditions to a new order of conditions, you're going to open the door for the same disgruntled people that had right. per, that but obviously had only had what with you've written in the new orders of conditions, not anything that's in, in the other orders. But if you take your old ones and try to twist them over here, you're, tw you're twisting things that aren't supposed to be. And that gives them all sorts of things to, to jump on. So that sounds like common sense to me. You're against it because it's going to take time for you to approach all those other boards to get your ducks in a row. Is, is that correct? Yeah. It just, so that's, that's your only issue with that is the timing the for, that would take you to get the permits. Right. Yeah. And, and like I said, it's my my original intent when I came before the board was I asked if they thought it was a good idea, and they said yes, and they were behind it, 100 percent. And and they worked with me for quite a while, and I don't know what happened, but something went awry in the middle of the whole thing. But but um, originally, um, 
originally it was it was um, designed to go in the permanent location. That's what we wanted to do, and um, and then we settled for the temporary. And only that's until what the we, order is for right now for temporary. Only until we raise some money, we finally raise the money, and then we want to get it into that permanent location. So so if it takes a new notice of intent. Um, you know, that we want to change it over to the permanent location um, and we have to go through the whole regime again. There's no way that we're going to be able to do that in a short amount of time. And we're going to end up either losing the money or spending it somewhere else. Rachel, so, in the uh, in the packet that you made is the... Uh, I didn't make these. Oh, packets. you didn't make that? That's from Sabrina. That's from Sabrina, yes. okay. Yeah, I haven't had a chance to look at it yet, but is the, is the, uh, the order of conditions in there? I that, can't imagine that. Okay, no, sorry. it wouldn't be in there. It's not in no. there. I believe, and it's because I haven't read them, but I believe in the order of conditions that are written on the temporary location, it mentions that this order of conditions is for the temporary location while you're getting plans and filing a notice of intent for the permit. I yes. believe yep. that wording that is in, oh. if, which says yeah. basically you need a new order of conditions oh. for the permanent location. Or to plans. amend that one so that yep. it is one process. No, it says you have to have a new one. It says, well, it says it? yes, that's, I'm, well, can we see I'm it? almost, I think, I think, we, I think we need to review it. Yeah, we, need to yeah, review it. we should all review it. Yeah. Yeah. So see, we can all get on the same page. I don't think it says that you need a new one, but he's right as far as it saying, we'll allow the temporary a location as long as you're working to put this in the permanent location and I agreed to that and I said yes we would, that's definitely exactly what we want to do so that, that, that may be more what the word yeah. the wording is right. that way but it didn't say that this wheel could just we could just put it there it said that you had to be working for right. that thing exactly working for that means right. you'd have to have a new notice of intent because right. the and work that's, up and that's there why was entirely I thought, different I don't do this for a living I'm not an engineer, um, you know, I've been a cop my whole life, so all of this stuff is, was new to me from day one when I started, and, um, and I received a lot of help from Bob it's and uh, the secretary when we first started doing this stuff, um, so it went along pretty good as, you know, when we first started doing this, but as far as all of these procedures and what you need to do now and what you need to do tomorrow and all that, that's, that's uh, totally in my head. And, uh, and I just asked for some uh, leniency on that end of it, is that, that this is a town project. This is not a Billy Bolter project. Mm -hmm. right? This is a town project. This is something that, that we designed to, for the town, that, that they made for the town, that this guy donated this wheel to the town. And it's, and it's um, um, I mean, if they spent all of the money on, on the Heron Run Park down there, and then uh, next year, the CPC said, we'll give you sixty or $70,000 to put the wheel in the water. I'd be happy as a clam. I don't have a problem with that. But if we go to CPC and ask for money in CPC and say that we need more money to put the water wheel in the water, we've got all these other projects done, and we want money for CPC, do you really think that the town is going to turn around and say, we can't afford firefighters, we can't afford cops, we can't afford to pay the DPW to take care of our roads, and we're going to give you $60,000 to put a water wheel in the water down there? The CPC money no. won't matter because the so, CPC money can't be used for firefighters and so, yeah. and so forth. <laughs> no, but I mean it's, I you know what I mean by the town? Yeah, I know town, what you're saying, but it, people yeah, are going to say that. CPC money has <laughs> to only special so, stuff. The, you know, it's going to be a losing battle, and that's all you need is one or two people to stand up on town yeah. meeting floor and say, ah, this is crazy, you know, and, and the rest of the people are going to say, yeah, forget it, don't you know, throw the thing away or something. I believe, Bill, that we'd be foolish not in any of these plans that we're talking about, the handicap <coughs> and the bypass fish ladder, not to include at least the basics for the wheel, one way or the other. But it needs to be all put as a, as a group. I right, know, even, if you don't wanna, even if it's yeah. done in stages. Right. Even if it's we can, we can, we right. can approve a complete plan, and then can, when yeah. it's done, it's you know in stages. Yeah. That's yeah. fine. Right. And if and the water wheel is strictly aesthetic, 
then if yeah, that's the last piece of the puzzle, then it does. It's just a, an aesthetic. So anyway. that, I say that well, that's the all. Whole, the whole no, park that all can be <coughs> done. It just again. The whole park is the an piece aesthetic. Of a good plan. But the ladder is. It shows what we're striving for. It's an aesthetic. It's a made-up, fake yeah. historical site. So it's all aesthetic. And but I I really think that we're, and and unfortunately, and I don't want to toot the horn. Meeting in there before the one thing that tripped up all these appeals. It's something I told you people not to do in that room. I said, don't uh, change this, do it this way. And everyone said, no, we're going to uh, appeal, we're going to do this and that. And that's just what tripped this whole thing up. And I'm, my experience is telling me that if you try to move this and appeal it and flip everything over, you're going to be in a mess as bad as what we've had before because there's going to be all sorts of things there that they can say every permit that you have that you flip is going to be an appeal point. So it sounds like we're, as a as a group, we're somewhat split on on amending or filing a new one. I think at the end of the day, it's it's up to you guys to decide how you want to play it, right? We we can deal with it any way you want, you know, whatever way you think it's it's going to be the smoothest, you know, is really uh, up to you, right? Because it doesn't, you know, whether you want go to amend it or file a new one, yeah, we're if, still going to treat it you, the same if way. If you talk to uh, like Ashfield. Yeah, Amy. I mean, what's Amy? She, got well, she a, gave me the two options. She gave me two. She didn't want to tell you. Each well, no, she answer. said, you know, yeah, you could amend. Flip, yeah. You could amend the damn thing. Yeah. Or you could file a new one. Yeah. Right. But even if you amend it, I think you're going to have to go through all of. The only this thing she said thing. about it: if you amend the order of conditions, you still get the same drop dead date of next June. Yeah. If you don't, and you file a new notice of intent, then you got three years. Three years of what? The design or the money? Oh, I'm just man. asking. I mean, three years for the order of conditions. The order, the order is good so for three. But you, no. can, you can extend the order. You yeah. can extend oh, yeah. the order. Right. Yeah. But the money, we can't extend, correct? Mm -hmm. Look, I'm going to be really nice one more time. <laughs> Let me do the damn thing. I'll come in front of you folks, and there will be a plan. There's a plan here, and that's for the water wheel. And then we're going to have, the, we're going to embrace the bridge and the handicap accessibility, Absolutely. and the fish ladder, all right? All in one project. Yep. That so that nice. we can use the most of that 100000 okay? Mm -hmm. well, I think we're going to run out of money if we, you know, don't plan it right. So I, I agree with what you're, I'm not fighting, I'm agreeing mm -hmm. with you on that aspect, total, that a plan is essential. We've got pieces and plots, but you can't really do the whole project at once. But you can plan it. Right. You can plan. No, we can, we can, we can plan it, it. we can approve it, and how it gets done. And if the last right. thing that comes in important. is putting <laughs> the wheel in by using yep. CPC money, yeah. so be it. Right. So, right. so, then, so right. then practically, though, then the ladder has to wait. It doesn't That's have the, to. Well, I'm not. Brad Chase. I'm, I'm not the engineer. I thought I need said, Brad Chase to come put in here and tell me what his plan is. So if Brad Chase says I need the wheel in first, so I can work around. I don't believe. What's going, I'm just, yeah. just I saying. Don't Rick, I don't believe that for a second. I think he I'm just wants to know it, how it. big the structure is going Where to be is. that how holds right. the wheel, the not design. the wheel itself. Right. Mm -hmm. He just needs specs so we can build around it. He doesn't need the thing actually. One last thing for making it a new plan is we're now including a fish ladder and all, which never was in the original. Right. So right. you're you're adding a, a whole different character to it. The, all the more reason that there should be a new, clean order of conditions to do a project. I think you've, heard, you've heard what my yeah, opinions yeah. Of, yeah. of what I think. I just think that's I, the, the way to do it. I don't think we can meet a, a, a come together thing here, so I think maybe reviewing this work where she doesn't know it and he doesn't know it, the new members, I think that's critical for them to know. Well, I don't know if they even want to know. I mean, I anybody who knows only can can be tainting what you might think. I I would I would like people to start this project as if we didn't have. Right. I'm more interested. If we in haven't what's fought a battle for the last yesterday. five years, I don't care what happened yesterday. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. You know, yeah. I, again, yeah. I want to see how we can get this done. I don't want. I don't want. I like to. I like to forget the last five years. It's been a terrible time in. The, Pembroke's yep. and the people that, that have been involved with it. I like to 
Forget that. I like to see a nice product. I like to see a nice product. You're going to get people who are going to complain, but maybe we can all fight them together if we've got a nice, clean project. So there's one concern that I have is that the money's going to go away. Now, is that, is that possible? Away. That money is not, not going away. That go first away. part of the money is not going away. That gets us going on a project. Because it seems like we've had money if before that's gone away. Marine fisheries, $1,000, that starts the ball rolling. Because that's what he wants. Yeah. That's, he, that's he needs 1000 bucks. That's all he wants? Yeah. Wow. Well, for the fish ladder, well, no, that's, that's, that's all he still, wants. That's yeah. still pretty good. But that's why yeah. i got to have a talk with him. Yeah. Yeah. Because I want to find out, yeah. do you really need 1000 or do you need a little bit more? Yeah. Because that's what the money, the hundred thousand's for. So, yeah. See, you guys are meeting, Rachel. When? Eighteen. I'll be here. I, I agree with Bob that the last five years has been negative, negative, negative on top, and negative, more negative, and a big pile of negatives. I agree with that statement, hundred percent. And it would be good to have that go away. I think the other thing I like about starting clean is then we don't have to really care about what happened in the last five years. We're just starting with a new plan, <laughs> and, and we, don't, we don't have to do <laughs> yeah, you know, We all agree. agree. If there's anybody that lost his hair, it was me. Well, I've had my... I think we can say, well, we want you guys to leave here knowing I'm not going deep down inside that, 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 that we want to work with you and we want to get this done. I appreciate whatever you can do. And I want to thank you for all your work on the wheel. Yeah. This is the Pembroke side of Ludlow's <clears throat> Ford. Okay. Now, Rick, I went before the North River Commission a couple of weeks ago. I know that. What the hell are we going to plant? What was cut down? Well, what was cut down? Birch trees, the el elm trees. I mean, it's very simple. Okay. Everybody agrees they're elm trees. Have you seen and then the other stuff, any of the, the, and, and the brush? Going back, the hold proposal on. He asked me a question. May I answer his question? Uh -uh. Okay. Um, the brush, when you cut it, doesn't really matter if it grows back to picked growth, which is a hollow growth. Mm -hmm. When you cut a tree, all you get, except for a black birch or a birch, is a pith growth. Correct me if I'm wrong. Those are never. Hello? Trees, when you cut them, they do not rejuvenate. They grow a pith growth, which is a hollow, lesser tree. Not as strong, not as viable. Many shoots on one stump, and they're just not really a tree anymore. They're a pith growth, which is a sucker or a water shoot. When you cut brush, brush rejuvenates. It's, it's used to being uh, water's edge, willows, black alders, those trees not trees, those hard brush growths that usually go no more than 15 feet tall, rejuvenate all the time. They get eaten by animals. They get taken out by ice. So the difference about a tree is that when you try to grow a bunch of suckers on one stump, it saps all the strength for a bunch of trees, you know, suckers on one stump, and you won't get the growth. What we're missing there is the upper canopy was taken, which takes and allows more nutrition to go to the invasive species that we we're supposed to take out. So it, it's like you you, in, you encourage the invasives by not having an upper canopy to take the light and the nutrients from the roots. There's no place for Oreos anymore to nest over the water, which I've seen many nests in there. I've seen the dead trees are not dead, as you learn in conservation. The dead tree is as live as a, as a live tree. The kingfisher nested and there's fish below it that's why they nest there to teach their young how to dive on the juveniles a whole ecosystem was completely altered and, re and reversed that takes 30 years to put back when those trees were cut on the water okay so, so we need to put back canopy trees and since it's west elm street and they were elm trees there are some options that they have a chinese look-alike elm and you can look at it in Hanover, it's called the Elms, even though they're not Elms. I have the name in my pocket if you want it. They, you can't tell them from an Elm. They don't have Dutch Elm disease. So I would say switch out the Elm trees for that particular species. Okay, now, where the trees were taken out, we have um, 
mean, it drastically altered the canopy and the habitat in a very negative you way. You know, and how did Hanover get away with what they did? I'm not, it's not my jurisdiction, know, not my, um, it's not right. my jurisdiction. But, but I'm did, sitting, did they do you, the same thing on the other side? Have you seen oh, the engineer's no. uh, report of the there are no trees work that is going to be done at that dam? Um, I, kn I know that when we passed the CPP funds that it was supposed to be the removal of non-invasives, I mean of invasives rather, not the native. This and is not CP some funds. The, the funds that we allocated for the project that I knew of. Okay, no, I, okay, okay I'm so talking about the town, the town paid for these is, trees to be taken out? This is an engineered repair of Ludham Ford Dam and site mm -hmm. that both the town of Hanover and the town of Pembroke have already approved money to do. So we can actually know where not to plant the trees and where to plant them then. Right. And basically. That'd be great. Right. Well, yeah. Basically, so we have a what, plan. That's what the report's going to tell you so if you look is at what this, we did if you look the at trees this down is what they want to area do right on here. our side and Hanover side. So Why would anybody want trees taken off of a, a river that's shaded? Because I don't understand that. Because the dam safety people say that any tree growing near a dam on the edge of the water or the bridge is a, a safety hazard for future things. But we're not going to plant trees so, near the dam. Right, so that's what I'm saying. So, so we're going to do, do, look at on, this the, section the right here, right? The basic process when you cut a tree, you plant three. Okay, that's what it is. So well, let's, let's listen to we what cut tree, about We this. cut trees, so you replace them with three. You wherever have, you want to put that's them. A, that's what, in to, to share with us. Right, but I mean, wherever you <laughs> want to plant them here. in right. this design please, would be please. great. Yes, let's listen to what the proposal yeah. is, please. No, all I want to know is where do you want those trees to be replaced? In this section here, certainly not towards the right, bridge. Not towards the bridge. Hanover doesn't right. want no, us to touch want, the bridge. No. And Hanover, their dam, which is news to the North River Commission, by the way, they had no idea about this dam that is being repaired that the town of Pembroke had just ponied up $100,000 yeah. on our side. But I did tell them that they are planning on extending the wall of the dam about 20 to 30 yards upstream and about 20, 30... You're going to do a whole new dam? Yep. Why? Wow. To prevent water from going around the dam. Why not take the whole dam out and then it won't go around it? They're, they're taking dams out all over the state. But I, not I, this I, dam they're not taking. Well, Why not? What does it do? Well, let's a move. Let's I think the that's biggest not my problem. Dam well, safety, that's their the problem. Right, right, well, I agree. It would well, be good for you to get the dam out. You'd be a hero. Think of all the birds and animals that would be happy about that. Well, it would be a great habitat for salmon and stuff to scour it out. But the problem is what's in the silt. I think that's a big mm -hmm. issue. And how much, how much of a problem would you be opening? My point is... What do you mean by close? Uh, what is the well, height elevations? Here. Is it because a washout would occur? Well, the washout is occurring now. Okay? Right, I know this. So that's what I brought it up for. Th they don't want water going around the dam. That right. happens, oh, yes. okay? <laughs> so they think if they build a retaining wall 20 yards upstream on the pond and extend that wall a little bit downstream, so that, as you know, and everybody it knows it's been up. out there, right. Right. It's you know, it seeps up. through the ground and all that. Up. That's why all that vegetation grew within weeks, yep. okay, because of all the water that's in that area. Yep. So they, the DPW director suggested to me that we don't do anything in this area. And, of course, here's where... Now, what's growing here? What are these trees that are growing here? That's where they're talking about the riprap, that's a single birch, and the others, I believe, are black alder, to my best knowledge at this point. And right. then this is an invasive tree that is a, my, the scown of this, this just horrible tree. So that rascal needs to come down? Yeah, that's what the one they should have taken out. That's an invasive what is okay. European, what is right. that's cool. European red maple. Now, what invasive. about the other guys? The, the others are hard brush. This is a tree. Um, you can cut birch off ten times. They grow an actual tree from a node above the root. The mm -hmm. one of the two trees that does that. The rest grow suckers. Uh, the hard brushes, they come back. You could actually dig those out and place them where you wanted to place them. They grow again. Just cut them off and place them. Cut them four feet off and replace Put them anywhere you want. My thing is, if we could have 
a definition of what near means to the water. Okay, then we so could this, then we would know. And, hold on. Yeah. Elevation wise, where they're not being flooded, we have a lot of places there. Some of the trees were cut high up, but they were still very much near the water and could have had been scoured out. And I agree with everything you're saying. So it would be a location where they could be enjoyed for shade mm -hmm. and hopefully close enough where some Orioles would be enticed to nest in them. The dead trees, we're not going to have those back. So they really don't matter that much, you know, because you're not going to get them back without putting a dead tree up and nobody's okay. going to do it. So. so along the banks, this would be the area that I guess the trees were cut. Yeah, they were they were actually cut right mm -hmm. along the water, right on the water's but that's edge. Right. Depending that's on the washout water. area, right? Depending on yeah, they were in a washout area. Yeah, I agree. Okay. Okay. All right. So agree if we plant some new trees there, no. then how close to the water's edge should they go? That should be a hydraulic engineer's decision. Um, ah, close enough. Well, hold on, my opinion. No, Rick. well, okay, my point. And no, that's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm listening here. So the point is, an elm tree can spread 60 feet, 30 feet in each direction. So if you could get them, say, 25 feet, 30 feet outside that flood zone, they'd actually, in years to, in to so come, maybe they would hang over the water. If you're looking at, if you're looking at, this is looking eastbound, toward that, you know, that one of the yeah, no concrete advantages, okay? Yeah. So would you plant the trees up here? I'd get them as close as I could to the water, since that's where they were, and they had a habitat there, and also, I think, not just for animals, but for people. This is a park for the people, and where they could be shading people in the future and handicapped accessible to everybody, not just on the edge of the river. But you I can't get too close because people can't sit anywhere well, near. That's what I'm saying. So I don't know what the final plan is. I don't have it here. Okay. There is no final plan. Sorry, there there is no final plan. We, are, we are finalizing the plan okay. as so we speak. My, I, what Fourteen would make me happy <laughs> would be have the shade for the people and the, and the water, okay, so which gives us a 60-foot span. Yeah. Trees that we've cut 60 down, feet. are going to be cut down for this project to begin with. Yeah. So well, 60, nobody knew that. That's so 60 oh, feet from where? But, but Hannah was going to lose their huh? trees, too. Um... <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a car. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a car. I have children picking me up. Are you good? <laughs> you are. I'm fine. I'll see you in the morning. Okay. Um, Hi, ladies. Hi. I think it would be jumping the gun to, to decide. Thank you so much for your, uh, oh, yeah, for your congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. congratulations. Thank you. I think it would be jumping the gun, like any other project, to do it without a final design. And we'd be doing a piecemeal thing that may not work. It may not work with the oh, actual design, think, like you said. I, I think we need can't, we shouldn't be doing anything until we find out exactly what they're going to do to repair the area. Wait till all, the because they're done. talking about yeah. putting riprap in some of that area where the brush is and and yeah. all that. I mean, what we're doing is you know, should wait until after yeah, I think they finish whatever they're doing. What if we buy some elm trees and plant them somewhere to, to start growing, and then when we get to they could them in the right place, them. they'll be already. Well, they could already spade yeah. them around. Yeah. That's yeah. kind of expensive. Yeah. Or we could leave them in a nursery yeah. and get them of a, a good size a when the time right. comes. Right. Because There's a lot we of will have a good tree fund good options. All good options. We can buy eight foot or ten foot trees if we want. If that's when there's a place to put them. So you want to see Hanover's plan? So perhaps wait. I don't think Hanover is part of this side of the river, are they? They own this side of the river? Well, they don't own it, but it's the a dam joint project. is a joint project. And okay. the DPW director told me what the plan was for the dam. For their side. They're cutting some trees on their side. Yeah, well, they have a plan to side. cut the trees, not just go in and cut them. Yeah, because the there's trees, a difference. Well, on the Pembroke plan, too. It's just that we didn't we plan didn't have a plan. North River people. We did it without a plan. We're well, going to oversee our taking care of a park in our town. In Hanover, the trees on the Hanover side are in the dam. Right, I know. That's that. why they're taking no, them. No, no, I right? understand. Okay. I understand that process, and it's important so, because you. Have so to how about all right? So, you guys, what I'm hearing from you guys is saying, well, uh, we're going to see what Hanover does, but assuming that Hanover <coughs> doesn't go 20 feet downstream, then. Well, they have theirs walled off pretty much. Their whole site is pretty much concrete walled right, right off. And that was original. Nobody put that in there after that. That was part of their flood control when they built it. 
um, seems like somebody cared about Hanover not washing out, and Pembroke was the other side. I uh, guess. Yeah, so you know? anyway, <laughs> so so let's look. Let's go back to our the trees on our side. So you are suggesting that we plant these trees, but they would be. You said as close to the water as, as possible. As possible. But not encroaching feet. on any hazardous area for the future or flood area. And I don't know what that's going to be. So, I mean, we could assume a lot of stuff, but assumptions are not going to work. And these, so, so this stuff that's here, that's, that's in the... There's some invasives still in there. I know that there's the... But that's in, like, with the water, right? Well, this whole area. I don't know where, again, without a plan, it's really hard to say what to do. It's not supposed to be water there, but it, it is. Well, so the, and by nature, there's not supposed to be a dam there. A beaver didn't build it, but yeah. man did, and it's there. So we have to negotiate that. Now, you're talking they're going to actually extend the wall up further, or are they going to put a wall right across the dam? No, going no. upstream. Okay. So it, on the Pembroke like side. A, almost a nine, not quite 90 degrees. It's a little, okay, so they're going to extend the dam the that exists on the end of it. They're not going across the pond. They're no. going to extend the wing walls like. I have, a, I have yeah. a question. And then a wing wall down here of some sort. Can the or decision, riprap or something. Yes. Can the decision okay. for tree planting wait till after all the construction's done so you know it's on the ground? Well, I think if you had a plan, all you need is the plan. You don't have to wait for all the construction mm -hmm. to be done but because trees yeah, take... Well, put it, I would, oh, we I would if, I, if I got a construction equipment work in the area, I know construction people. Yeah, I, mean, you I put agree. Trees, there's something in their way, it's and the, just all of a sudden the tree's gone. Mm -hmm. So yeah, to me, it's a it's not a smart but, move but, to plant but new then trees they have to have in the general put, area. Of they have to have insurance to put them back in well, that. What the heck am I going to tell the North River Commission? Um, tell me you got to plant some elm trees on this. Did they on this elm tree. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. I would I, I'm love actually, to do that. I'm actually not for elm trees at this but point. There's another tree. I, is it acceptable to tell them we want to make sure the trees live? Therefore, we're going to wait till all the joint no, projects. No, I don't is know. Coming. All of a sudden, well, I mean, now we're on the radar. Right we've been getting is well, I think if we had negotiated with them earlier, they wouldn't have that hair. Wouldn't they uh, see it uh, a smart thing to do to, to, you know, review the final plan as well? Wouldn't I would would think that if you gave you that think information, that they would think I would, that would be a good idea. They should I would be involved with the plan. I think, if, I think yeah. if we gave them information to them. They would be satisfied with it. I, I would hope. You, right? I know. Do they know about this plan to extend okay, the dam? My other wallet. They did. They do now. I they talked to them about well. that. They should have. I mean, it's. Well, they should have, well, but they didn't. Right. Well, the whole thing kind of got off to a rocky start. So I week. agree with you. It seems premature yeah. to do this without understanding the whole plan. And well, unless you want to just move them, them back out of the. Do we have a construction site that is? out of it and then we could put these trees and then when you do the design they could put in more trees that way you end up with more trees instead of less trees okay. and it satisfies you everybody have any idea hold on this i think we have a solution here how much time if, is this for, to, to, this build out is this like a two-year plan or is this something that's going to happen this year i mean mm -hmm. not this year things this summer? no no i mean as far as the, the wall being extended oh that's a yeah. year from now a year from now okay so oh, they're going to have to go through yeah and you guys yeah mm -hmm. And the North River Commission, so my, and Hanover. Mm -hmm. My point is that if we assume that there is a work location, say 60 feet from the dam, that we already know is going to stay park, and we plant some nice trees there, and then when the future work is done, we'll know the extent of how far we could plant, and maybe we could say in the order of conditions, they plant some nice trees there. We'd end up with more trees, not less trees, satisfy the North River Commission, mm -hmm. and move forward. But we can't. They, they aren't going to want them very close to the dam. No, no. I, I. That would be what I'm saying. The trees are for people's shade. When the work is done, and we know where the work is, only then can you decide how close to put a tree. Right. So that's not applicable, really, to plant trees there. I absolutely agree <coughs> with you. But part of the park is going to stay just like it is the open areas that are just open. It would be nice to have trees staggered through there. Oh, see, now you want trees in the open areas. A lot of people want some of that open area for this so and for go, other you go purposes. The, you go around the edges of it with a nice 
planting, a sporadic, not a straight uh -huh. line. Yeah, oh no, around the edge, right. And the only reason, you know, as West Elm Street elms, and we all know the elms are struggling, that's why I was concerned. Some elms in the future will actually struggle through that disease, become strong, and they will survive. Well. Those trees are the ones that have been being cut down, the ones that have survived a total blight. So it's like cutting down a chestnut tree that survived the blight, got an immune system together, and has now struggled through that process, become strong, which takes many years to do. And that's what those trees were doing. That's the process they were in. So we did do a loss there genetically, but maybe it's better to switch to, like Hanover did, a non-elm elm, because they won't have that problem. They look just like an elm. Did they and do it intentionally, or did that Intentionally. Who, who, who did it intentionally? It's called the elms, because El Hanover oh. did it for a underprivileged, uh, a lower income project. It's called the elms. Yeah. And if you look at it, I looked at them like, wow, how come those elm trees are going? They must have inoculated them. <coughs> um, which is another thing you can do is inoculate a tree, but it gets you in trouble. So I would say plant the trees away from the work zone where people, whoever they are, could appeal or not appeal when you do the in order here. Uh, plant non elm elm. Would well, they, that's Ch exactly what they Chinese are. Elm? Hmm? Did you call it, what kind of elm did you call it? I have it at home. So, you got any money so I can pay Steve Ivis? I'll get that information here. Yeah. I have well, it at home. Are they looking for a certain number of trees? Yes. No, I, well, I don't yes. know if they know a certain number. They just said they Well, yeah, they, did, they are. They were looking for a certain number of trees. How many? I was at the meeting. Uh, three times the cut. I think the cut was eight. Uh, but we decided. Where did they on. get three times? Uh, that's standard. That's standard. You cut a tree, you plant three. That's, that's only that standard. That was that was standard. Was put in this board in the, for this thing. That's not a standard anywhere else. It's standard in forestry. It's a total well, stop. Is, it's a wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm going to beg to differ. You can differ. I can differ. We can have different opinions without right. being emotional. As far as I've been grown up, great grandfather, grandfather, father, brother, cut a tree, you plant three, one to die out. One for the animals to kill and one to grow. That's what I've been taught since I was five years old. And I know that cut one when you're foresting, like at the park, you plant three. That's boilerplate. I beg to differ. That is boilerplate forestry. Great. All right, so. And that's what, what they decided on. Right. How many trees want? were cut? Eight. Who, who verified the eight? Um, I did. There's pictures. We I have did. films. He did. So that's 24 And trees. actually, well, Scott, yeah, wait a minute. Wait, let me finish. There. Scott yeah, said, right. wait, that wait, space wait. isn't even big enough for Scott said on it. film, wait, wait, verification. Scott said on film, I don't know what everybody's mad about. I only cut six trees this size. And I said, you forgot the dead ones. And he says, oh, yeah. So we have the size of tree by the person that cut them on film. We have him saying they were cut, that they were elms. So, and he grew up on West Elm Street, so I think he'd know an elm tree. Do you have a request for how many trees should be planted I think there? they said 12 was a, a minimum. They don't all have to be planted in that same place. They can be planted in All right, I don't want to belabor that yeah. point. I don't and we got one more to go. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, we have, We've absolutely we got nowhere around that. No, yeah, we did. I think plant them outside of the construction site. There's a future construction site coming. Bob's right. I don't right. think we should plant anything until we have a I don't think we, we should plant anything until the construction site is done. I, I don't they're, they're, the tree's going to be 100 feet from the construction site. I think it's irrelevant that it's a construction site because that's not the construction feet site. feet is nothing in a construction site mm. when they're working like that with those kind of guys. I'll, I'll accept that. I'll talk to Victor. I'll accept uh, he's that. He's the DPW director there. Yeah, I'll accept that. Now, I also have to report back to the North River Commission about the brown ooze that's coming out of the ground there. And at, I think at, not at just Williams the brown. Ford? Huh? At Ludum's Ford? Mm -hmm. yeah. that, that's metal, obviously, because every time you have an iron plate with a dam on it, it, it moves and it comes out. But what they're more concerned about are the cesspits to do with the rubber mill downstream from the right. bridge. That's a whole different, that's not ooze, that's black yuck that nothing grows on. You stick a stick two feet in it, shoop, you pull it out, and you don't want to smell now, it. Now, they didn't Is know it anything organic? about that. All they did was no, they talk do know about, about that. They yeah. were talking about I have by talked the to them dam. About that. No, they're talking about both. It's down from the dam on the other side of the river. Well, then I'll tell them that it, it's it's. I think you're right about river. the iron. I think There's the no iron is iron. It's down river from Blood's Ford. 
Isn't that part of Ludden Fort as well? No. Well, Ludden they Ford were. Is the upper part. So whose property is that then? Double Ludden Bridge. Once you get across it's the street, it's conservation right. property. So but it's not, it's not known as Ludden Sport. Right. No. right. But it so was. We got two different But stuff. it was actually attached to the original mill project because it was their disposal oh, site. Oh, definitely. All the whole area was both right. sides and up and down. Right. So, what we're talking about is the ooze, that, and the soil. Who knows what soil is? There. I, I would say, like you would say. It's iron coming under the dam, but what do we really soil, know? Some of that soil in that general area came out of the big dig in Boston too. There we go. So we don't know what's there. It did. Yes, so it we don't know what's there. Ooze. Yeah, mystery yeah. ooze. There you go. Oh, so is it, it's out being tested now? Mm. Or it's going to be. Well, who the hell is going to test it? Call and who's going to pay for it? <laughs> right. I, 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 it's, it's a very expensive, even just the testing is expensive. How much is expensive? I don't think we, we, we really need to find out. Well, the first thing that I was, when I was asked asked about it, just yeah. recently, I said, well, the first thing you're going to do is find a soil evaluator yeah. who will go up in there and take the first set of samples that way and take them out and bring them to the lab, and it'll cost you anywhere from 1000 to $10,000. Is what it will probably cost you to get the soil samples done to start with, and then if then comes out positive, then you may have to go in in with a machine and dig deeper to get other samples. If their domain is 200 feet on either side of the river, wouldn't they be testing it? Why are we talking about it? That seems well, like that's it's what in I'm the, saying. It's in their it's area. Their river. To test. It's just because we don't knew that stuff existed. Right. Yeah. But I, I would push it back to them. I mean, it's if, if they're saying I, if, I if 200 that, feet outside of the yeah, you bank is the you're telling us that it's hot, that it's then they should then maybe we'll have to take yeah. care of it. Well, well not just that, but if this is going to be a construction site and more soil is going to be being disturbed and moved, I think we need to know what's there. So if we have to put what a road construction, you just said they're going to do work. At that site, that's on the other side. That's on the other side. Well, oh, yeah. you said don't plant the trees here because they're going to do work there. That's the dam we talk that's about. The dam You're side. talking about the ooze down at the other. Well, this is, well this I'm is talking about both because obviously if you're going to dig up at the dam, you got to find out what's there too. There's well, they only but know that about. Be, they only ask me about by the dam. Right, but they have, they are aware. Well, and they, I didn't tell them that. Somebody else well, told Well, it doesn't them. matter who tells them. Okay, it's there. I know. But Whoever hides it is hiding it. Whoever tells them is telling the truth and bringing it to light. And I don't think that's anything to be put well, wh down. What ooze are we talking about? Are we talking about the about ooze the, the, up at the dam? The do ooze up at the dam. So we just said they brought in big dig soil. Now no, that's no, a whole other thing. No, I'm talking about, I'm, talking about I'm on the other side of the street, down the... Down river. Down, down river. river. That was big dig material? What? Yep. Some of that in that... That, that subdivision, subdivision is built on big dig material. What subdivision? Indian Head Street. Oh, down there which side? Wh wait a minute. Which side of the dam are we talking about? Hanover? Down, down River. Side yeah, but no, no. Which side of the? Down the river. Which side of the river are you talking you about? Mean like Hanover Pembroke? Pembroke? No, the subdivision. Where is it? Because I don't know. It goes the in by the big barn. Way up, way up the hill. No, no, right there at the river. It's uh, I don't know for right. it's Indian. It's called Indian Head Yeah, Hatch or something. Some that, some and there's a boat. It goes in there and there. makes a, a, a turn right, right by the uh, big barn area. There's a road going in there behind Globin's houses and all. So behind his house, up the hill. I I worked on that no, too. No, no, no. There's no hill there. Well, it no. goes downhill to the dam from um, Old West Elm Street, well, where Old West Elm comes out. Little, it comes downhill. Hill, not that much. But, but yeah. it's a hill. Well, if you're it's walking, a it's a yeah. hill. It goes in. So in we're there, talking the top. Goes in there to the river. We're talking about the one that's across from Old West Elm Street. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. Not the a barn is a barn, but yeah. Old West Elm Street's a, a street. That's way up. We're talking down on the What's river bank. Way, way up. It's less than a half a mile. Yeah. We're talking down flow, not anything up there. Is up there. We're talking about the jurisdiction of the North River Commission, which is the 300 feet, 50 foot critical, 100 foot not so critical. These are within the 50 foot zone of the of the river, maybe extending. The subdivision goes right into the river in that area. Their backyards, some of those backyards are almost in the river. I've been in there an awful lot. I've never seen any houses, even with the leaves off the trees from we the river. No, I'm just saying I've canoed it a thousand times. Yeah. I've never seen any houses that you can see with Where the Where all the stone walls are and the cattle pens. 
with oh, a, I can with tell a forest. You, by your face, you, you and no, I no. haven't walked the same place in there then, because it's all stone walls. You can tell them we don't know what the ooze is. Oh, I'll tell well, them. Well, there's two they, different sites. I mean, if they went to test it. Yes. yes. If they assist us, in, that. if they would assist us in that, I think that would be something we should work towards because it's really within their jurisdiction, and they're I they've got lots of money. I would think it would make sense for them to come to a meeting, this one of these our meetings. Yeah, I think so we're, we're kind of crossing. They never it. send anybody. They well, we got two reps on it. Yeah, you Paul Turner and Andrew Sullivan. Yeah, right. <laughs> Okay. Well, I think we're talking the trees and the ooze under the dam is one thing, and then across the street, the cesspits, as you said, aren't really connected to that. So are they going to be connected, or are they going to stay unconnected? That's the process. If they're unconnected, and we look at it that way, then it's the, the ooze under the dam where the work's going to be done. I didn't even, and that's what, I'll, that's what I'll concentrate on, all right? That's what I'm saying. I think, okay. I think, ooze under the dam is strictly the iron oil coming out of the well, ground. That's the, It'd be good to know that, and that's what they want to know, I think. I think it is, too. I agree with you there. But I think the other issue is still one that has to be addressed. The cesspits should be addressed. It's a rubber mill. They're noted for C PCBs. And if you do notice my last comment, nothing grows in those cesspits. Not a thing. That should tell you something. The three-headed products. Because rubber rubber mill used a lot and, of sulfur and a lot of PCBs and curing too. their rubber, and if the sulfur that's right. there, it's and not going to grow. That's right. PCBs, listen, real quick. Last thing, PCBs were invented. They weren't. They're not natural. They're out of rubber. They came with the industry. That's the threat. PCBs washing right into the North River every time it rains. And if they're not there, that's great. If they're there, then it's a disaster. If they're there, someone should have been testing. North River people test their Somebody all should, the time. yes, somebody should somebody test. Somebody should request them to do it. Somebody, they, first you have to look at it as which site's which site. I think that's what you need to do there, right? Is that site's different from that site. Yeah. You know? Gotcha. All right, I'll concentrate on the dam first. Yeah, concentrate on the dam site. We don't want it to tell Sounds like it makes right. sense. Thank you, Ed. Thank, Thank you, you folks. Come again. Thank you. We'll see you at the next meeting. All right. And, uh,